finally time to do an Astara video. Um, I'm really excited about this because um, I'm just a little bit bored of grey skies and cold now so really looking forward to the spring season ahead and all the lovely things that come with it. I was supposed to film this video a little bit earlier but if I'm being completely honest it's been so cold, misty, miserable, grey and dark and I just haven't really felt the spring or star eye vibes. Um, so today I'm doing it because the sun is actually shining, we've got beautiful blue sky and I just went outside and it's lovely. So we're going to do that today. Um, so just a little bit of background on Astara first about what is it because I do feel like the internet is great and it's really good that everyone shares loads of information but everyone just kind of like splats pagan words onto things and like doesn't really look at the history and, and why things are the way they are. So simply put, Astara is one of the pagan festivals and when I say that I mean the modern wheel of the year includes Astara as a pagan festival um, but there is thousands of years of history all across the world of people um, doing different kind of spring rituals, traditions, celebrations, that kind of thing. And the word Astara um, actually comes from Old English. If you've watched any of my videos before then you'll know that I love Anglo-Saxon history and I love the monk Bede. <laughs> Bede is just great, I love him. Um, he wrote down so many things that nobody else considered writing about and even though obviously he was a Christian monk he was not really caring about the pagan stuff and he just kind of like mentioned a little tiny, tiny bit here and there. Why would he want to write about it in detail? Um, we've got some things from him that nobody else ever mentioned. And what I mean by that is, he is the only person who actually wrote down about the goddess Yostre, which is where Ostara, modern kind of Ostara, comes from, is the name of this goddess. And there are different locations, uh, like Germanic locations, with um, where you can trace this name in locations and certain things like that. So there are other bits of evidence around the world, but the only person who ever actually wrote down Yostre is Bede and it's Old English and it is in the Northumbrian dialect of Old English and I am from this area so that's very exciting to me as well it's a Northumbrian word um, and he wrote just a really short sentence and basically said that in Yostre Monath which is what we know now as April the pagans would have a feast for the goddess Yostre that is all he said so everything else that's come about now in the modern times is picked up from different things that have happened, different traditions, um, or just kind of like made up using vibes, which I'm not against at all. Um, so that is where Astara kind of comes from, is that springtime tradition, but the word Astara is from the goddess Yostre. So like many of the, the pagan festivals now, they are lined up with the movements of the sun and the moon and that kind of thing. So Astara is typically um, the time of year when the day and the night are of equal length. So this is just saying to us that the long dark nights of winter are coming to an end. The day is starting to balance out with the night and warm days are coming, long warm days are coming. So that's what it's all about. It's about celebrating new life, new beginnings, um, things awakening, coming back to life. It's a really good time to start sowing seeds, literally and metaphorically, um, dreaming, planning, setting goals and starting to work on those goals. So maybe you did some reflections in the winter time or new year and that kind of thing of like, what you want to do this year and some intentions and now's a good time to really get going with them and put them into practice the whole world is awakening around you and you're all in this together so this is just a chill video showing you a couple of things that you can do as always i try to keep it simple and accessible so that is what we're going to do in this video
something that is really nice to do is just to create like a bit of a spring area and it can be like an actual altar space if you want to use it for that or it can just be like a general fun spring area just to celebrate the season and just yeah have a few little bits of decor and things like that so I've got a couple of random things here um, that I think I'm going to put on display somehow here um, so it's nice to have a little plant of some kind. This is just a cutting of uh, mint from my mint plant in the garden and with this little gardening <laughs> gnome pot. Um, but what can be really nice is just to have a small plant pot with one bulb in it. Um, it can be like a hyacinth or something like that and it smells amazing and they just they look lovely just by themselves. The only hyacinth I've got outside already in big pots, so this is what I'm going to do this year, is just have this little mint. Um, of course, I've got the daffodils that I just made, um, and they are basically just a candle holder. And I've got this lovely lilac candle, which, again, just really gives me the vibes of Ostara and springtime. And this is a uh, beeswax candle. Um, and I actually got this for house sitting for someone in Glastonbury. I'll put a link to her shop in the description because she makes loads of lovely things like this. Um, but this is a candle that she gave me. I've also got this wooden egg. And this is actually from Bouja Bouja Vegan Chocolate from about, I don't know, seven years ago. And um, as you can see, I've got a little intention in there. More on that later. Um, but this is just a little box and obviously because it's an egg it really reminds me of the springtime so I like to put that on here as well. This is a little bunny that I actually made many many years ago and it's been moved so much it's got these little marks on it now just from you know various being shoved in various boxes and things but I made this little bunny um, for an Ostara space altar um, because I just thought it was lovely. Um, I've got this fairy as well and I painted her genuinely when I was about 13 years old. It was one of those pottery things where you go and paint it and then you get to keep what you painted. Um, so that kind of gives me the spring vibes as well. I've also got these two prints of my friend Kirsty's artwork and um, I love this one so much. I love everything about the green man but I think I actually might frame this and put it up somewhere else. But I think this will be a really good one um, because it's obviously um, got this lovely hair in it. And I really just associate that with the springtime because all around here I can just see the bunnies and hairs and everything everywhere. So that'll be really nice. Another thing that I often do is have a look through um, like a deck and just pull out a couple of cards that remind me of springtime and I just put those on display. And this is my favourite deck, um, I've shown it before, it's a Druid Craft Tarot deck. I just, I love the vibe and the, the artwork and everything. So I usually just have a look through here, I kind of know the ones that I pick now. Um, the Lady, this one really gives me a lot of... Um, spring vibes with the new growth and new life and that sort of thing it is also quite harvesty with the horn of plenty and the green and things like that but that's a potential the sun could be a good one for now or towards the summer with the return of the sun and this isn't based on anything by the way this is just the vibes that i get from things so you can you can do whatever you want really rebirth that's quite a nice one and it's got the imagery of the hair again so yeah, I might go with those three, um, but I might just check my Jessica Rue tarot deck as well, just to see if there's anything in there that sort of would be nice to put up. I love this deck, it's so beautiful. It is American though, so some of the plants and animals are more American, I don't really see them here, um, but it's still lovely. So I'm just going to see if there's anything that's calling out spring to me.
as I was saying, this time of the year is all about intention, sowing seeds and making things happen. So I'm going to share with you two different really, really simple intention rituals that you can do. And the first one is literally sowing seeds. So I've got these sweet pea seeds, which I soaked overnight, and I'm going to plant them in here. And the idea behind this is just that you really do some focusing and some kind of meditation on the things that you are wanting to accomplish this year or things that you want to see come into fruition and you kind of imbue that energy into the seed and then you just plant it and every time you water it you think about that intention again and think about focusing energy into it and as it grows you're kind of watching the intention come true so that's what we're going to do for the first one And the next one is just involving this egg that I showed before, but you don't need an egg, you can do it with anything, you can do it with a box, an envelope, whatever, and this obviously just is like an egg and something coming to life, so it's a nice one to do it with. So what I'm going to do is just write down something that I really want to happen this year, or that I'm going to make happen I should say, um, obviously you want to work on the things that you are focusing on, this is just a nice way to push things along, but I'm basically just going to write down um, the thing that I want to achieve and focus on that and put that into this egg and then watch it come into play. Then all I'm gonna do is just fold it and put it inside the egg. So as I say, you can do it with an envelope, a box, anything, and I'm just gonna keep it here in full view all the time along with my seeds. So I can just get a reminder of it all the time and just to keep continue working on the goals. And those are just two really simple intention rituals that you can do, it doesn't require much work, um, but it's just a nice way to kind of focus on things that you wanna work on and just kind of, yeah, watching things come into play. Some other things that are really nice to do at this time of the year as well is do some kind of baking. Um, so you can make something maybe like out of oats or make some cookies, bread, bread's a nice one. Just because um, a lot of the tradition around this time is to do with feasting. So you can just make something um, for yourself and have gratitude for the food or um, you could have a feast as well, it could just be with you, or it could be with other people, get some people together, share food, and it's a really nice time of the year to do that. As always, my main recommendation is just to simply get outside, get outside and see what's going on around you. Um, it's been quite a slow start to spring here, I will be honest, but the daffodils are finally out. And on a beautiful day like this where the sun is shining, it just feels so good to get the sunlight on your face, it can be, really really lovely after such a long winter just to feel like the warmth is coming back so it's a really lovely time of year it's a very hopeful positive energizing time of year 
so get outside have a look see what's going on and see if there are some things that you can forage yet things like primrose cleavers uh, the new growth on nettles um, these kind of things just have a look see what's going on and just feel a bit more connected to what's going on around you the world around you everyone watching this is from a different place well, I'm sure some of you might live in the same place, but in general, everyone's from a different place. So it's really about just getting connected to the land around you and what's going on around you. And ultimately, you can look back on thousands of years of tradition, but there's no right or wrong way to do anything. It's all about just what you feel, what you feel connected to and what feels right for you. So that's what I would encourage you to tap into. But I hope you've enjoyed this simple Ostara video and had a couple of ideas on things that you could do. And yes, I really hope you, you are feeling the spring vibes and looking forward to a lovely year of sunshine and growth. Hopefully I will see you in the next video.